Welcome to Digital Performer 10.1, done quick. So let's get into this. Let's start with the new MIDI features. And the most notable one is Digital Performer now has MIDI clips that work just like any other clips or sound bites. Motu also improved the clip editor for MIDI clips. And if you don't like the new clips, you can unpack your MIDI data back into a normal MIDI track or pack it back in. Retrospective record is now available, which means I can play some notes during playback or not during playback when record is not on. And then I can just go and drop that data straight into my project. There's a new velocity tool, which makes changing note velocity much easier. Previously, marquee selecting notes worked based on the head of the note, but now there is an option to make it work based on touching any part of the note at all. Digital Performer can either not send volume and pan for MIDI tracks with no automation, or it can send volume and pan for MIDI tracks without automation. Surprisingly, this is a pretty big feature for some people. The snip tool essentially removes time from a project, and originally it would leave the leftover note tails at the beginning of the snip. You can now hold Alt or Option to make these note tails adjusted to the beginning of the snip. Clips are a new thing in DP, so let's see what they've done with them this time. There's a new option that allows you to record MIDI directly into MIDI clips. And you can record audio directly into audio clips now which is a feature that I was really hoping would happen. You can record your launching performance in the clips window directly to the sequencer, which allows you to work similar to other products like Live or Bitwig. Pretty cool. Since MIDI clips now exist in the sequence window, you can drag and drop between the clips and sequence window with MIDI clips. There are some pretty significant improvements to the interface, so let's look at those. Let's look at version 10 first, so you can see those tiny little velocity dots that we've had to deal with. Then, let's jump over to 10.1, where you can see that they have made a huge improvement. And now I'll quickly blind you with a higher contrast theme. Isn't that wonderful? MIDI notes have new display options to show rounded corners, to show notes that are off screen, and in sequence view, you can show a border around the notes, or not. 10.1 has a new punch indicator and a new memory cycle bar. 10.0 has this weird little thing that was annoying. Muting notes in 10.0 was somewhat difficult to see, but in 10.1, they've made this much easier to differentiate between a muted note and an unmuted note. Assign tracks to all different colors now finally works correctly. Thank goodness. On to some general workflow improvements. Digital Performer's bounce window has been improved with a number of options that were either there or not there before. Notably though, one of the big things is that there is now stem export. You can export tracks or buses directly to their own audio files using a widget just like DP's track selector. Duplicate used to only work on time selections, but now it works on any object. You can now have automation interpolation connect points directly from the last to the next, or you can optionally have it interpolate only at edit boundaries, which means that you won't have automation going wild while a reverb tail or some other tail goes on. There's a new scrolling and zooming preference pane, which matches up with the ability to scroll and zoom with the mouse wheel or your trackpad. There's a new hand tool that lets you move around your project like you're using some sort of graphic software. In version 10, changing the size of a MIDI track in the sequence window just gave you a bunch more space to look at. But in 10.1, it resizes everything, showing you what you have. In 10.0, zoom to selection only worked horizontally. However, in 10.1, it works vertically and horizontally. Audio Options has an audition volume option for scrubbing and stuff. 10.0 had an I-beam tool that only worked on a single track, so you can only copy things on a single track. But 10.1 lets you I-beam multiple tracks. There are nearly 300 bug fixes. That's just some of the big features that I really like in this update. There's nearly 500 changes. Go check it out. It's a completely free update. It's a point one update. Thanks for watching. AdamWombie.com, patreon.com slash Have a good day.